Hello and welcome to my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you to my day ones, twos, and threes. Thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in. That means well. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you all and welcome, welcome, welcome. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes. So everything is alleged. Some is not. And the fair act use is in my description box, y'all. So let's get to it, y'all. Y'all, I'm not going to lie to y'all. This one right here is, um, it bothers me. This story right here really, 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 really bothers me. Um, in a matter of weeks, y'all, in a matter of weeks, over 30 children have disappeared, y'all, missing in Cleveland, Ohio, okay? And I did a video on this before about kids coming up missing and stuff, people coming up missing in Cleveland. And um, it's coming back up again because it's alarming rates now that they are coming up missing. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say this, y'all. They found one that just came up missing and, you know, they found this body and he was taken out. But it's a lot of them that they're not finding. Where are these kids at, y'all? And the crazy part, the area and everything in which these kids are being taken from, a lot of them are um, kids that's in the system, y'all. And when I say in a system, not jail system, DCFS system, y'all. And it was a story back here a while ago about DCFS, um, I, don't, I forgot where it was. I have to look up the um, information again. But DCFS, um, in a certain particular area, city and state, was um, not doing a job, and they were actually a part of some type of ring as well. So I'm going to say this, okay? Um, to me, this screams that too. Okay, y'all, I'm just saying, this story and all this about Cleveland, Ohio, all of these kids coming up missing, it puts you in a matter of that story as well when, you know, they were talking about how kids were coming up missing. And when a guy, the police guy, came on and did his interview and everything, he said, you know, they were asked, you know, why all of these empty, you know, you can't see the faces. They got a lot of, you know, um, post up about kids coming up missing but they only have their name and stuff like that age but they don't have their pictures and people was asking the police why in the world don't they have pictures too because this helped people find them in case you see them and the police said that the majority of the kids that's coming up missing basically if just if you break it down in so many words he's saying that all these children right here that they don't have a face no pictures our majority of kids that was in DCFS custody as far as they placed them somewhere, okay? And they came up missing or um, they got of age where, and this is happening a lot. You know, the kids get a certain age, they are putting them out and stuff like that, and they're to fend for themselves. They're just pushing them away after their the check ends. And word on the street, this is what's going on in, in this situation. A lot of people that um, and kids that were in DCFS, you know, that put them in homes, these are the ones that's coming up missing. And they're saying that they don't have up-to-date pictures because I guess the people that they placed these kids with, they didn't do family pictures and stuff like that. Um, let me tell y'all something that is a red flag in this whole situation. And this is from personal stuff that I didn't went through as far as um, working with DCFS and stuff like that. Um, one thing about DCFS that I know of, and this is a number one rule, they have to have up-to-date pictures of the kids. Not only do they have to have up-to-date pictures of the kids, they also, um, when they go to school, they have to have up-to-date pictures of these kids. So ask yourself this question, y'all. Why all of these kids that's coming up missing are the ones that, you know, don't even have you no know, pictures in their background and all of this stuff? Um, I think they need to start sniffing around DCFS office. 
on this one right here, y'all, in Cleveland. And I'm going to just give people advice that live in Cleveland, and this is happening in a particular area that all these kids is coming up missing, y'all. It's like reverse children of the coin. It's like the parents taking the kids out. It's some weird stuff going on. It's like some movie stuff. And I'm going to just say this. If you are a parent in Cleveland, Ohio, and all of this is going on around you, and kids is just coming up missing left and right and right and left, um, my advice to you would be to move. And I'm just keeping it straight up, what I would do. Okay? Now, I'm not saying you got to keep running from this and that and that and this. But apparently, there's some kind of ring going on right now. And if they look up and get one of, you know, somebody else's kids, instead of getting, you know, people, kids that's in, you know, DCFS care, that don't have pictures, that's, that's just some extras for them. Because it seems like the ones that don't have pictures is the ones that they're targeting. And how do they not, and how do they even know they don't have pictures? Okay, y'all. I'm telling you, DCFS just dropping the ball on this one. Because kids normally have pictures, and it's just alarming, right? Look at all these kids that don't have pictures. It's like they're placing them to me. This is my personal opinion. It seems as if DCFS, to me, is placing these kids um, in places where they know they ain't going to take care of them. They don't really care about them. And then, you know, when they're hitting certain ages or whenever they're feeling like they need to strike, they're taking these kids. And it seems as if, you know, it's a possibility. I'm going to say allegedly that the agency has something to do with this. Because it's just an alarming rate of kids that is in DCFS custody, that's in foster care and stuff like that that's being taken. And this has happened before. So it doesn't surprise me that it's a pattern with the other case that DCFS was working with, you know, traffickers. Okay, y'all? So this what this screams to me. And it's just extra when they find other kids out, you know, that's not a part of the system. You know, like the other ones that has a face on the pictures. I would move out of Cleveland, Ohio, y'all. It's something going on there that um, is not right. Seriously. It's something not right about this whole situation. Even the, the, the race of the kids. If you look at all these pictures, the majority of these kids you know, our African-American kids, y'all, which is odd, okay? It just seems as if, you know, we're being targeted. And like I said, y'all, um, I would move. I would move because I would be petrified every day that my child walks out the door. You know, is they going to come back? I would be petrified. And there's so many cases going on, which means that... The, they're out here straight up targeting these kids. There's no way that I could, you know, let my child go out and feel comfortable. I'm just saying, y'all. Okay? Um, look at the pictures. The majority of them are African-American children, y'all, that they're taking. So I want to play this little clip for you all. I want to play this clip for you all. So this is saying the teens that's been missing. This is a chart. Like, I guess January to April, it was 11 kids missing. And then April to May 1st, it's 34. It's 30 kids in one month, April to May. 30 kids, y'all. 30-something. 30 Something ain't right about this. And I know that they like to use children when they're doing their little rituals. And this is a year of skull and bones. Um, this also could be about trafficking as well. We don't know. But something is off about this. I want to play this news report for you all. And this is Bill Bolden, a senior inspector with the U.S. Marshals Service and Newburgh Heights, Ohio, police chief John Majoy. His suburb is just outside of Cleveland. It's great to have both of you here. Chief, I'd like to start with you. These numbers are alarming. 34 kids disappearing just in May. What do you think is going on? 
Well, I think the key thing here is maybe not so much disappearing, but they, they could be run away. There's no evidence to show any abductions or any other criminal enterprise that may be involved in this. Really? Uh, but it's still an alarming <laughs> number all the same, uh, being that there's this many children reported missing at, at this time of year. Uh, school's getting out, the weather's getting warmer. Uh, so there, it is certainly an uptick, and it's certainly something that we want to make sure we draw concern to and bring the public's awareness to this so we can help bring these kids home safe. Chief, is there any geographic pattern? Are they missing from certain neighborhoods? No, I don't think that there's any pattern that, that's that's certainly pointing to a certain area or a certain dimension. I think it's just one of those areas where from time to time we'll see an uptick in uh, burglaries, we'll see an uptick in uh, perhaps road rage incidents or robberies or something like that. And so anytime that, that crime or, or incidents like this spike, there's, there's a concern and we certainly want to the public to to be aware of this but really there's no smoking gun that's pointing in a particular direction that's going to say okay this is what the culprit is or this is what the cause is and this is what we need to do to prevent it or to bring these kids home safe it's really going to be a conglomerate of effort to bring these kids home safe inspector Baldwin, the vast majority of kids who go missing are runaways but that doesn't mean they're out of danger right that's correct what we've learned is the the, the largest percentage of cases that we work start out as runaways uh, and once these kids get on the street, the, they're very susceptible to become victims of a whole variety of crimes. Uh, they have very little resources to survive, and they're often forced to either engage in criminal activity or, or other activities, uh, you know, just to survive on the street and keep a roof over their head. Right, they, that's, they what, that's what leads to trafficking, very, right? That, that leads to trafficking, that leads to uh, a whole variety of other issues. Uh, you know, oftentimes it's not the trafficking that you see in the movies. It's simply they're engaging in activity just so they can have a roof over their head and, and, and food to eat. And there's no shortage of people to take advantage of these kids when they're out there. Chief, more than half the missing kids on your website do not have recent pictures. How much does that hinder your search for them? It's a tremendous hindrance because it's so difficult to chase down a name versus a fake. And so the more that we can get these faces out there for the public to see, the better off we are. But unfortunately, as you see, there's over half of those that don't have photos available, which is really challenging for law enforcement because it makes it all the more harder to go ahead and broadcast this out to the public and, and, and bring awareness to that. And it's a really, it's a detriment to the case at times because it slows things down quite a bit. Right. You, the officers, witnesses, people in the neighborhood, they don't know who they're looking for. They don't know what face to look for. Exactly. Inspector, exactly. so many kids spend so much time on social media. How much might that be factoring in here? For example, meeting somebody online that, you know, has said, hey, let's meet. So, you know, run away and let's meet here or there. I think social media is a big driving factor behind behind these kids. They're going to be inclined to run away from whatever situation they're running away from anyway. But now, instead of just being in their neighborhood or down the street or with somebody they met at school, now they have this instant ability to be, make friends or hook up with somebody from a different city, different county, different state, where prior to social media, they would tend to stay in their own neighborhoods in their own communities. Right. And, now and, they just and Inspector, around. a lot of times the, the person you're communicating with online may be catfishing you. They're not who they say they are. Absolutely. How many times do you see that happen with kids? Uh, we we oft, oftentimes we see them, uh, especially the you know the younger kids. Uh, they're corresponding with people through social media that they believe are their age, and they're oftentimes older adults. You know, twenties, thirties. We've had them, you know, in, in their fifties that have been you know befriending these children through social media, and these kids run away they feel like they have nowhere else to go and so they they go to this person and once they're there they're often they're often trapped not like physically trapped or held against their will they just don't, don't have the ability to leave right we're talking about kids here they may be teenagers yes. but they not only have no resources they don't have life experience and know what to do and how to get out and mm -hmm. have any resources to help them do so finally i would just like to have both of you comment on this I, i'm really stuck on this number of 34 kids i'm a mom myself have you either of you ever seen this many kids vanish from an area in one month? No, I, I have not. Chief, you go first. No, I'm sorry. In my 33 years, no, I have not. This this is an alarmingly high number. But again, I think it's really important that the public know that there, there's no panic 
think that there's no one that, that's uh, randomly abducting these children off of the streets. Uh, as Inspector Bolden said, you know, that the, these children are subject uh, to prey and being preyed upon. But again, this 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 enhances the uh, emphasis that we want to put for parents to watch the social media of their children, uh, watch who they're talking to, watch where they're going, uh, follow some of the. Are they serious? Now they're saying that they don't know what's really going on with these kids, but at the same time, they're giving you all an excuse of what they think it is. They're saying that this is you know people that's meeting people on the internet. Could somebody, y'all, can y'all explain to me why just a particular area uh, area of Cleveland, Ohio children are all on the internet and meeting up with people at the same time, y'all? Some Is this the excuse that they are throwing out about this? Because this don't sound right. It don't sound right at all. And it's like, yeah, I know the number is alarming, but a lot of these are runaways. A lot of these are this. A lot of these are that. How are you running away if you are, you know, being pushed out when you get a certain age because a check pop, you know, don't keep on going for you? How is all of these people, a lot of them, um, children that's in the system as far as DCFS system? Something ain't right about this. And how would the people that, you know, um... This seems like an organized thing to me. I'm just saying. This seems very organized, and it also seems as if they know the majority of the kids that they get are kids that don't have even photos taken. And this is why a lot of them, I think, are getting picked, because they have no photos. And somebody in the, on the inside has to know stuff like this. Somebody that's close around these kids. And the only thing that I can think of is the agency. Is there somebody from the agency that's playing a part in this? Y'all, I'm just saying. And another thing I would like to know is all of these children from the same agency that's been coming up missing that, you know, is in foster care. I want to know, it because in foster care, they have a lot of different agencies. So we need to find out that if a lot of these kids that's in foster care that came up missing is from the same agency. That's very important, y'all, right now. That's what I say. Okay, y'all? That's what I truly believe. But y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think, Okay. We need to spread the word so this could get out to everybody that these kids are missing in Cleveland. If y'all know people in Cleveland, then um, let them be aware. Okay, don't go, kids, don't go out by themselves and all of that stuff. Take extra precautions until you can get your, you know, um, stuff together and just get out of that situation. Because it seems as if the police are making excuses so that they can brush this off. By saying, oh, they're runaways, the majority of them. Oh, this, oh, that. If you don't know if they're runaway or not, shouldn't you look for them just like you do anybody else? I'm just saying, y'all, that come up missing. It just seems like, to me, I'm, I'm saying allegedly, but this is my personal opinion. He don't seem like he really care. I'm just saying, y'all. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thanks so much for watching. Peace.